We've moved away from the console and we're now in Reason's rack. And you can see that there are loads of mix elements here in the rack as well as in the console. And essentially these are the same thing. So when they're folded down in this way, you can see they look very similar to the console. Let's just flip back to the console quickly. And you can see we've got pretty much the same stuff as we've got down here in the channel strip. So let's quickly flip to the rack. You'll see that we've got mute, solo, level control, pan, the sequencer and mix shortcuts. We've got our EQ shortcut and a level window as well. So a good amount of metering here. So there you go. Pretty much the same thing as we've got in this area and a little bit from the EQ section as well. You can actually access the EQ. We'll be looking at the EQ in depth later, but you can access the EQ right here. So why have we got console mix channels and mix elements and audio tracks right here in the rack? Well, it's so that you can get into routing and you can actually manually route things to different places. And it's also so you can insert effects. So let's take a look at how that works. Right now, I've got this lead flute area, lead flute channel highlighted. And like I said before, when this is closed, it looks pretty similar, like a horizontal version of the channel strip in the console. But if we open it up, you can see we've got some extra things going on. Now straight up you can select the output or the input even of the channel that you say you're recording into these channels. You can quickly select this from here. You can bypass any effects. So I'm gonna look at the effects in just a second. You can still access the mutant solo obviously. We've also got a programmer. Now this relates to the shortcuts, the soft knobs, the soft keys that you see in the console. You can actually program these and decide what they do. If we load up a preset, Let's load up a modulation preset or a chorus preset, for example. You'll see that we actually get some of these key parameters are highlighted and they become active. But you can program these yourself. Let's say you wanted to program the chorus send. You can decide that you want it to be on rotary one. You want the delay to change on rotary two. You want the rate to change, etc., etc. And you can change these by selecting these drop down menus here. If we flip the rack round, you'll see that the routing all takes place just in the same way that it does in any other device. So you've got all your cables going in and out of the mixer channel here, but you can actually break this routing. So if you take this direct out here and let's route it somewhere else, we'll take it to a hardware input, for example, or hardware output. And this would come out of the output of my audio interface. What this means is that it's broken the internal routing of the mixer. You're not going to hear this in the structure of the mixer. It's actually been broken and now it's being sent out physically to another place. We've also got a side chain section here and a parallel routing section. I've got a whole chapter dedicated to these features alone. So you can see that it's a pretty powerful device and there really is a need for there to be a separate device from the mixer. It's not just a gimmick it really does work. So you control everything in the console and really your routing takes place here in the rack. But saying that, you know, you have got quite a lot of access to the controls that you have on the console as well. So if you are in the rack and you're performing some routing and adding effects, you can still access these key parameters. Now you saw me quickly load up a preset before, but I'm gonna show you how to do that on the fly and how to audition different presets for different effects and different channel strip settings using the drag and drop feature of Reason.